Hey there, gang. A few years ago, I did a video called One Preamp, Four Power Amps, and it was like really sexy and a sultry video. Got like a million hits. Um, and I took a Wagner Fish preamp, ran it through a VHT, a Mesa, a Tubeworks, and a Lee Jackson power amp. Just, just kind of hear the difference between these. I think it's kind of helpful to know what the power amp section brings to your preamp, if you're a preamp kind of guy. So I'm going to do it again. And there's a reason for that is because I can't actually lift it. It's too heavy. So we're going to do this the, because yes, the legendary coveted H and H V 800 legendary. Why? It's just a big ass solid state power amp, but Eddie Van Halen used it. So th there you go. Done. Uh, but really, that's not why it was legendary to me. It was legendary to me because Michael Landau had that in his rack. That's the picture in Tales from the Bulge that's sitting on top of his rack. There's uh, the H&H. &H. And then they didn't show up that often. So it's this like, is that the secret of the tone? Could it, could it be the power amp and not that Mike is a harmonic genius and an incredible guitar player? No, it's the power amp for sure. So we got the H and H. We got the VHD twenty one fifty because that's my favorite. We're also going to use the Rivera TBR one SL power section, and it it is really even in the manual they say it's like a, a TBR a tube pr B. I can't remember what TBR stands for. It was like tube based rack system. It's the, it's a preamp and a power amp. So they take the power amp, they put their awesome preamp in there. Uh, and lastly, I think we'll use the Fryat power station because I love that thing. That's like m one of my favorite power amps, regardless of wattage I plug in and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's it, man. That's my stuff. I like it very much. And, uh, it's also one of my favorite power loads. So, uh, we're going to use a cabinet though, going out to Marshall 412. It's all mic'd up. So that's what you'll be hearing. And I'm totally unprepared for this. So I don't know what I'm going to play. I'm tr I'll try and find something that I could kind of duplicate. I can play it kind of the same ish to reach, uh, power amp and we'll see. The other reason I I'm going to do this is cause I could kind of show you this sweet thing. Oh, oh yeah, look at this. Yeah, so uh, if you guys watch my channel, uh, you know I've had a X88R in my rack since kind of the beginning of this. That was uh, the second preamp I got. It went 80A MP1 to the X88R, which was a lovely, lovely big jump. Uh, this is my buddy Michael Torrens SP77. When these came out, this is the American one. There is also a Japanese built one, which uh, I'll show you another day because he has that one too. When these came out, they were kind of like people poo pooed them. They're like, oh, that's that's some the cheap stuff. That's fake Saldano. That's not the good stuff. I'm here to tell you, like, this is legit. It's good. It's super good. I don't know why anyone ever had a problem with it. Um, you know what I am? I'm going to tell you right now why people had a problem with it because X88Rs were not set up at stores. You wouldn't find an X88R at a guitar center and like, come try out this $2,000 uh, preamp in a giant rack that's set up properly. But these were, I think they were coming in around like, I don't know, five to 700 bucks or something. And you used to be able to get them for like next to nothing for a while there and now people figured it out. So now they're over a grand again. Well, over a grand, they, they shouldn't be over a grand. They didn't, I don't think they sold for over a grand. Anyway, they'd set these up in the store because these were a more reasonably priced product. And they'd be like, here you go, uh, power amp. Yeah, just put any old power amp under there. There you go. And then they plug people in and it would probably some crappy speaker because who knows? You go, Dad, doesn't it sound good? And uh, you no, know, it sounds fizzy and rizzy and razzy. Yeah, so that's why I think these got a bad rap because 
they were set up in a bad rig. So let's plug this into some good rigs and see what it sounds like, yo. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
and that takes a long time to do with all the switching and patching. I did plug one power amp into another power amp twice. So it's a testament to these guys. They all survived. They survived my terrible patching test. Uh, I haven't listened back, so I don't really know uh, what I'm hearing, but I will tell you the Rivera is the loudest thing I've ever heard. And I think it's just 60 watts aside. I'm not even sure if it's bridging, but just the preamp going into it, because maybe because I'm running into the effects return, you have to just nudge that effects return just barely, and it's still coming in hot. So it's con hard to control that level, and I think sometimes it was louder than the others. So that might contribute to some of the difference in the sound. Um, I love the 2150. It's just got a nice harmonic stuff up top, good punch. It's a little scooped, but... Uh, like it sits in the mix so well. The H and H is kind of fat sounding. Occasionally, might sound a little flat. So I think I've seen you know graphic EQs and stuff in there, uh, and guys racks to maybe compensate for that. And then the power station uh, is great. It's just a good all arounder, and it's uh, way cheaper than all these other guys. So uh, I hope this uh, was interesting. Yeah. Well, we don't even call it educational. We'll just call it mildly interesting. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later.